We are fundamentally dependent on space for every element of our way of life. Unfortunately, space is contested. Our potential adversaries are intent on denying our use of space for peace or for defense, and they are increasingly operating in a very unsafe and unprofessional manner. We must protect and defend freedom of exploit exploration, freedom of navigation, and freedom of action in space. Your Space Force is doing just that, but the demand for our capabilities and our services far outpaces the resources we currently have available. The nation, the nation must invest more in space. Failure to do so could be devastating to all we hold dear. As highlighted in the 2024 annual threat assessment by the US intelligence community, our pacing challenges, the PRC and the Russian Federation, have fielded credible capabilities capable of challenging our space, our use of space, as well as our allies and partners' use of space. For example, the PRC has nearly 1,000 satellites in orbit, about 500 of which are capable of tracking and targeting our joint and coalition forces. Our competitors also demonstrated deployment of offensive capabilities that can target and destroy space systems in all orbital regimes. In fact, their actions have demonstrated a willingness to defy international norms of behavior in an unsafe and unprofessional manner. These are not just accusations. As many of you have heard, Russia is developing an anti-satellite capability in space designed to carry a nuclear weapon. What righteous purpose could there be for placing a nuke in space? There isn't one, none whatsoever. What they want is to instill fear and to dominate space and through it control every other domain, air, land, and sea. Make no mistake, whoever controls space controls the future. There are three tenets to competitive endurance. First, we must avoid operational surprise. This means we must maintain awareness of what's happening in space at all times. Second, we must deny first mover advantage. Like I said, space is vast and it is dark, and it can be hard to attribute an action to ill will until it is too late, and we have lost the operational advantage to defend ourselves. We must make unwarned attack impractical and self-defeating. The finite tenant we must conduct is responsible counterspace campaigning. This means we must develop cap capabilities to defect, to protect and defend ourselves, but in doing so, we need to demonstrate safe and professional behavior in alignment with international norms of behavior, and we must work hard to protect the environment from additional pollution that could jeopardize the use of space for generations to come. So that is our playbook in a nutshell. Avoid operational surprise, deny first mover advantage, and conduct responsible counter space campaigning. We know we need the ability to protect and defend ourselves. Uh, that wasn't built into our legacy systems because space was benign and we never really worried about it. So now how do I go back and protect those capabilities? Uh, we know we have to guarantee the services that the nation relies on every single day, for example, GPS. Uh, so how do we do that? And that's really where we started pivoting towards. Uh, what we also know, based on the scarcity of resources, is that we can't go it alone. So we are really pushing hard down the partnership path with our allies and partnerships with commercial. There's an enormous amount of innovation coming out of uh, industry today. How do I leverage that? How do I take advantage of that? Uh, in the past, the DOD felt like we needed to own all of our own kit and operate all of our own kit. Uh, that way we could guarantee during times of crisis or conflict that that kit was available. Um, when you start pivoting towards a great power competition, it becomes all of the nation and all of the world uh, that needs to come together in partnerships. And that's really where we are investing heavily in the commercial space strategy and in our allied partnerships, even to the point where we now have uh, Air Marshal Godfrey, uh, a UK three-star on our Space Force staff, advising the CSO on how we can better partner with our allies. Okay. Do you have an unclassified version of what would happen in space during wartime against a peer over the first three days that you can explain to the public and even members of Congress outside of a skiff. And We'd, if that scenario was truly known, you know, how do you think it would affect your resourcing? So we do have several narratives that we do talk about unclassified, about what the impacts uh, would be, and I talked about some of them last week. 
Uh, there's one study out there that says 15 minutes without GPS in this nation would be a billion and a half dollar hit to the economy, and it would dwarf anything that we've seen since COVID. That is a large impact. But when you try to explain it to the public and explain, hey, why do I care? Ask them how they got wherever they are today. They followed a map on their phone that was driven by GPS. They probably stopped and got gas that was driven by an ATM machine that is aligned to the GPS signal. If we lose GPS in this nation, we can't get crops out of the field. I can't get goods off the shelf. I can't get goods, or goods off the boat. I can't get goods to the shelf. I can't get ambulances to your house and you can't travel. That is a significant impact to our day-to-day -day life and some of the freedoms that we take for granted every single day. And that's just GPS, the global positioning position system. That's just one system of many. What would, we lose, what would we do if our cell phones couldn't communicate because they couldn't connect through space? That'd be another impact. What would we do if we couldn't get the weather from the satellites in space? We wouldn't be able to tell, is a storm coming? Is a hurricane coming? You know, is a typhoon coming? We would lose all that. So it'd be a significant impact to our way of life if we lose space. And we have several narratives that we can uh, get to you on that. Uh, there's even an uh, older video, but it's a video that talks about uh, a day without space. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. Uh, that's where we started the narrative of talking about what the impacts might look like.